Hi, I'm Mike Davies, and I'm here to discuss the conjecture, uh, which we call perigee zero conjecture, uh, about a potential impact event in the North American continent uh, somewhere between 10,000 and 15,000 years ago. Um, our basis of the investigation started from those enigmatic Carolina Bay formations found in the East Coast and more recently uh, in the interior of the United States. Um, and the Carolina Bays uh, being enigmatic because they're quite uh, elliptical, oval, geometrically perfectly designed. The common analysis of it by the scientists is that these structures were built by wind-blown lakes that created rims around them and these oval shapes. Um, the current count of them is somewhere upwards of 50,000 in the North American continent, so it's certainly an unusual shape or formation in spite of their very, very large quantities of being on the planet. In the, 30, in the about 50 years since these have been investigated, no one actually has an adequate explanation. Neither are there being formed any place else on the planet, either before these events or after these events, or at least they haven't been identified. So they're actually very, very unique formations. Um, I started looking at these shapes and saying that they're unusually like what you get from paint splatter. A uh, simple paint splatter lands on the ground, very hydrous. You basically get a bowl effect in the middle of it, holds water, and you get a rim around it. Um, anybody who's painted has got these kind of paint drops around on the wall or on the floor to verify that concept. The other thing we've done is experiments where we throw heavier um, objects. Uh, these are basically clay, uh, and you basically if you throw them at an angle, you basically get these oval elliptical shapes. And ironically, if you show them, throw them fast enough, within those structures, you get these elliptical structures built from the dynamic activity of that, of that, uh, that uh, clay as it hits the ground at high speeds. It basically spreads and bubbles and differences in density create these, these oval shapes in the surface. So, um, the next thing we discovered is a paper by um, uh, R.B. Daniels uh, quite a while ago where he looked at the Goldsboro Ridge. The Goldsboro Ridge is a structure uh, standing on the Southern Formation uh, in Central North Carolina um, where he felt it was quite enigmatic. The name of his paper was indeed an enigma, the Goldsboro Ridge. Um, his statement that we caught and have been working with since is the Goldboro Ridge is a unique feature on the Sutherland surface that requires special explanation, whatever its origin. The sand in the bay rim, and these are the bay rims here that we're talking about, um, uh, is not different from the Goldsboro Ridge sand, meaning this is red area here is the Goldsboro Ridge. Therefore, these Carolina bays are merely surface features associated with the formation of the ridge. So from that we took, could this actually be a depositional feature where this actually was deposited all in one unit, one element at one time, as distal ejecta, meaning I took, had an impact someplace on the planet, created vast amounts. Uh, we're estimating tens of millions of cubic kilometers of sand, gravel, a lot of water mixed together, creating a slurry that comes across the the continent is a wave, depositing big sheets of this, creating these little ripples, these little bubbles in the surface of the sheet. Um, so where else you see them? We, we have here actually a cross section, uh, courtesy of George Howard, of a sand uh, of Carolina Bay rim, and looking at it, one does not see, and this is a very understood thing, you do not see any kind of horizons within these units of sand on these rims. They're homogeneous, very turbulated, very mixed, but uh, our, our intuition here is that this is basically a big slab dropped at one moment of time uh, on the land, creating this basically a unit of sand. One of the other interesting things about uh, the Gopher Ridge we can see here, this is a global map review of the, uh, the ridge and cross-section, and this little bump here in elevation is actually this bay rim here. There's another ray rim down below. Uh, we come up to this, which we actually... Okay, in part one.